Good evening and welcome to DL Physics and today I'm going to talk about the thermal nuclear reactor and important parts of it. What you may be asked is you may be asked for information about what are the important parts of it and you also may be asked how to deal with the waste afterwards and that's what I'm going to deal with today. So this here is a very rough sketch of a thermal nuclear reactor and what I have is I've got a steel vat okay, with a moderator inside and I've got these control rods that are, can come down and be moved. And this red thing here is the fuel. So this is the uranium-235. I've also got like a pipe that goes into a coolant here. So I've got this idea of these control rods that I can lift in and out of the, where the reaction's taking place. And so the whole idea of a thermal nuclear reactor is these parts, the coolant, the moderator, and the um, actual control rods are important because what they can do is control the reaction. One of the biggest problems of nuclear fission is the chain reaction that is caused. The door to nuclei fling off, and these hit other uranium, which causes them to be unstable, which causes them to decay. And if you think about it, if I make one atom decays into two, those two hit another two, those hit two, hit another two, so that's four. And as you can see, it can get out of control quite quickly. Okay, so what I'm gonna talk about here is I'm going to talk about each of the parts. Now, the fuel is the fuel. That's the obvious part of it here. Um, but what I'm going to talk about, first of all, is this idea of control rods. Okay, so control rods... Okay. Tend to be made from sort of boron or steel. Okay. And the idea is that they absorb neutrons. Okay, so they absorb neutrons, okay, um, to basically reduce the chance of chain reactions. They absorb neutrons to reduce reactions. And you can control this by having the control rods not in at all, or the control rods in more and more and more. And as you put more in, they will absorb more neutrons, so you can slow the decay down. Now, the moderator... The job of the moderator, and moderators can be graphite or sometimes heavy water. And the some, use, reason you use heavy water is because you can also use that as a coolant as well. Is that their job is to act more, more like a viscous fluid. The whole job of it is to slow the neutrons down. So you're slowing these neutrons or these dual to nuclei down so when they do hit another element they haven't got as much kinetic energy so it will slow down the decay rate okay so it won't make them as unstable also by slowing them down the time it will take to reach another one to cause decay or nuclear fission would also decrease so you are slowing the rate of reaction down so graphite or heavy water slows the neutron down the control rod absorbs the neutrons so there aren't any in the first place to decay the moderator controls it they slow it down so you don't have this idea of all these neutrons scattering all over the place really quickly now the coolant it does exactly what it says on the tin and it can be co2 or water and what this is going to do is remove excess energy Okay, so it's going to remove excess heat energy from the system. To, of course, what, if you remove energy from the system, much like what the moderator's doing, you can reduce the amount of, of uh, reaction. But the more important part is that you do not want the whole reactor to melt. So you reduce the um, heat energy that's being given off by the reaction and control it so you're not actually melting and causing problems with your material. Okay, so this idea here of these control rods, this moderator and this coolant, all in all work together to control the nuclear reaction. And this is to actually maintain its rate, to keep it steady, because you don't want to overload the turbine. But at the same time, what it's doing is allowing you to control safely with a nuclear reactor. Now this is important because there have been nuclear accidents before. So in Chernobyl, for example, um, in the Ukraine, 
what happened was, uh, well, reportedly happened, there was, uh, they were testing and they had removed the control rods and removing the control rods meant the reaction was unstable and it decayed much quicker than expected, which caused, of course, the, um, what we saw, which was the nuclear fallout from that. In Fukushima, in Japan, it was a little bit different. It was all to do with um, what happened due to an earthquake. I'm going to discuss that about how we deal with nuclear waste now, because that is a consideration we need to take into account to prevent uh, a nuclear disaster. So, I just grab this here. Dealing with nuclear waste, okay, so dealing with nuclear waste. First of all, before you even touch the stuff, you must let it cool down. It will be releasing energy. And the waste itself, even though um, we've got sort of polonium and or thorium being given off, we do not want to be dealing with really high energy. So what happens is that they allow waste to cool. Okay. And it's where they store it is important, okay? So they allow waste to cool um, and store in lead barrels, okay? And the reason they use lead is because lead is one of those materials that stops alpha, beta, and gamma radiation. So in these lead barrels, these things are cooling down and they, the people outside of these lead barrels are not being irradiated. Of course, when you are handling nuclear waste, you will be properly briefed, you'll be wearing the appropriate equipment, okay? And you'll also be monitored for how much irradiation you experience, okay? But these are the steps that nuclear power plants take to deal with this. Now, depending on what waste it is, depending on the half-life of the waste, depends how you store it from now on. If a short half-life, which means that it will decay after a while. You can store it in these lead barrels, okay? And places like Sellafield, okay, this is one of the ways they used to store the nuclear waste that happened up there. Now, what they may do is have a special confined area for that, places that are under protection, etc. Now, if they have a long half-life, you have to take into some other um, precautions. One of the things you might have to do to these, bar these uh, ones, you have to bury them. So you may have to bury the barrels. And this is where the idea of where you bury them is important. If you bury them on a fault line where there's going to be an earthquake, what might happen is these barrels may become dislodged they may cause material ruptures and it leaks into, of course, the water table, which is not desirable. So where you, where you bury these barrels is important. It has to be very, very deep underground. Okay, so very deep underground and it must be stable where they are. But of course, over time, lead or steel may become um, corroded, which is a bad thing, because if you put it in such an area that it is going to corrode, what will happen is those barrels would have a hole in them and the things would leak anyway. So another method that we can actually store nuclear waste is for a process called vitrification. Okay. And vitrification is the process of putting the nuclear waste in glass. Now silica is a very, very what you want to make glass, is a very stable atom. So it won't react, okay? So it won't react with any chemicals. It doesn't corrode. It's not like iron or steel, but it is a very, very expensive process. But for this nuclear waste, it's gonna be lasting a very, very, very long time. And you do not want it to affect the local environment vitrifying is a very good way of making sure that it doesn't corrode and it's stable, okay? So this idea of putting nuclear waste in glass because glass is stable. Okay, 
So nuclear waste in itself, the initial stages, of course, are that we wait for it to cool down. We don't go in straight on, okay? We, if we're going to handle it, we will handle it with total precaution methods, etc. So we'll be wearing our appropriate uh, radiation suits, or we will, be, of course, be monitored for the amount of radiation we're receiving. We would stick it into lead or steel barrels, and depending on the half-life of this, we would store it in our relevant place. So if the half-life is quite short, we could store in lead barrels. We do tend to try and bury them anyway, but because you do not want radiation to be, uh, these lead barrels full of radiated waste to be around. Um, but you can, if it's a very short half-life, you can leave it. Much like, for example, thorium is a short half-life um, in your body, which is why you can be injected with um, not thorium, technetium, I do apologise. If it has a long half-life, this is when it gets a little bit interesting, that we actually have to consider how we store this for the indefinite term. So deep, but burying it deep underground in barrels, and it has to be deep underground, not just like a deep underground, okay, is to actually um, make sure that one, any seismic shifts from building or above it don't affect it, but also to make sure that we're not, hopefully not affecting any of the water table. The other way we could, of course, do that, okay, is we can use vitrification, which is the process of putting nuclear waste in glass, and this is much more preferable but more expensive because silica is so stable it's not chemically <coughs> it won't chemically corrode underground okay and the one other thing they could do which is possible for all these long half-lives is to basically drown it in concrete so cover in concrete and this is genuinely to look at the fact that if you cover it in concrete, you're fixing it in its position. It hasn't got any wiggle room. It's not going to actually um, move and crack. So this is how a nuclear reactor works. And the, the important part of the safety concepts of the nuclear reactor, the control rods, the coolant and the moderator, all making sure that the reactor doesn't overload. How we deal with the waste that comes after this is via this and it all depends on the situation we are in where we are in and the environment that we're in and also the the laws and legislations of the place we're in but the important parts to consider of course are what type of radiation it is how long is it as half-life and the environment you are in if you're in a place prone to earthquakes storing your um storing your nuclear waste deep underground may be a problem because it may shift due to seismic um uh seismic shifts okay and that there is the thermal nuclear reactor.